today we're going to look into using ROS2. So ROS2 is natively supported now in Ajax Dynamics for Unreal, meaning we don't have to run a separate server or anything like that. We don't have to have a separate installation of ROS2 at all. We just need to install Ajax Dynamics for Unreal and then we can send and receive ROS2 messages from either Blueprint or C++. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about sending and receiving built-in message types. Uh, we're also going to talk about QoS or quality of service. And lastly, I'm going to mention a way that we can actually send custom data as well. We don't have to stick to the built-in data types. So let's dive right in. Um, let's start off by sending some message from uh, Ajax Dynamics for Unreal and receiving those messages from uh, an external application running ROS2. So I'm going to start off by creating a blueprint, as we so often do. And just to have something interesting to send, I'm going to create a pendulum type thing. So I'm going to build this very simple mechanism here just for demonstration purposes. I'm going to create a rigid body with a box shape. I'm going to offset this a bit in the world. Let's set a hinge. And I have to specify that we are attaching the rigid body to the hinge. I'm actually going to rotate this as well, like so, so that the box can now uh, swing back and forth like a pendulum around this hinge point. Uh, and only for visuals, I'm actually going to add a cylinder shape as well. I'm going to disable collision for it. It's only going to be a visual thing. Uh, I'm setting up some visual materials here just to make it look a little bit nicer uh, like so let's drag that into the world all right and if i now press play we see that we have a, a pendulum type thing <laughs> and uh, i thought that we can take the angle of this and send that as a ros2 message so let's do that uh, we come here to the event graph and the way we send and receive ROS2 messages is via the publisher and subscriber components. So I can go add and look for publisher and I will find this AGX ROS2 publisher. Let's attach it to the scene route and sending messages is really simple. I just have to drag this out here and I go send. And here we can see all the different message types that we can send. So we support all message, built-in message types of geometry messages, uh, sensor messages, STD messages, uh, etc. You can look into the user manual to see exactly what message types are supported here. Uh, but as I mentioned earlier, we're, we're also going to mention a way that you can actually send the custom data as well. But here... I want to send a float 64, so I want to send the angle of the hinge as a double, basically. Uh, the topic will be called angle. And I want to do this every step forward. We could use tick for this, like so, but I actually want to do it in step forward because we don't want to miss a, a single tick. So for that, I'm going to grab the simulation object. We're going to bind to pre-step forward. This is done once in begin play, and we can create our custom event like this. So this event right here will now be triggered once every time the simulation takes a step forward. Because the, st the step forward and the Unreal tick don't necessarily have to be in sync, depending on your step mode and the step forward time that you have specified in, in the settings. Uh, so we're going to do it like this. And now for the message, let's make a float64 message and we're going to input the angle of this hinge. So I'm going to grab that hinge constraint, and we're going to call it get angle and input it like so. Okay, let's see how that works. I have prepared an external application for this, so I'm going to press play here. We can see that we are now receiving the, the angle, uh, basically going from 0 to 180, which is expected. The initial position was 
to the far left. That's why the zero position is to the left. Now let's take a look at how we can receive messages as well. So instead of publishing the angle here, let's actually remove all of this. I'm going to remove the publisher as well. I have prepared so that we have an external application sending messages on the on a velocity topic. So we can actually use that to set the target speed on this hinge constraint. So I'm going to go over to the hinge constraint, enable the target speed controller. And we need a subscriber. So the way we receive messages is very similar. We just call the receive function. So this is very similar to how we did the send. We know that we want to receive a float 64 here. Um, and the topic here will be vel for velocity. And the way this works is receive will actually uh, return a true or false depending on if a message was received or not. So we actually have to check the, the return value of this function. It is uh, non-blocking, so it will return immediately if nothing was received. So I'm going to call branch here. And we are going to read this message. Let's grab the target speed controller and call the set speed function on it. We're going to do this if we actually receive the message, like so. Right, so if we receive a message, uh, we take that data and we input it as a speed to the target speed controller. So let's see how that looks now. So now we see that we get messages from the outside. Here we have the external application sending speed commands, if you will. Uh, and we're applying that to the target speed controller. Let's look into setting QoS uh, or quality of service. Uh, quality of service is something that we can set to determine the lifetime behavior on our uh, messages that we are sending and receiving. So. If I press the subscriber here in the details panel, we see that we have a QoS properties. We can set the QoS for reliability, durability, history, and history depth. Uh, these will be defaulted to the same values as in ROS2, but you can specify them if you like. Similarly, on our publisher component, we see that we have the same QoS settings available. Uh, if you want to know more details about this, how QoS works, uh, you can look into the user manual. You can also look at ROS2's own uh, documentation for QoS or quality of service, which is uh, a really good source of information regarding QoS. Lastly, I'm going to mention a way that we can send custom data as well. So we've seen now that we can send and receive built-in message types. I'm actually not going to demo this uh, completely just to keep this video from getting too long. But I will mention just quickly the, the broad idea, and that is that we can take a custom data. So let's imagine we have a, a, a struct my data with a float member, a vector of strings, and signed 16 bit integer. So let's say we wanted to send this via ROS2. We can actually serialize this in runtime as an AGX any message, and we can send that as an any message, receive it, and then deserialize it in runtime. We do this with something called the any message builder and any message parser. So this is described in detail in the user manual. So I recommend you going there. I'm gonna just show very quickly that we have indeed a an any message builder and an any message parser. So you can use these helper components to, to build up or serialize this message. Uh, I'm not gonna go further into that. Uh, as I said, please look into the user manual. There is descriptions and pictures of how you can do this. That's it for today. I hope you liked this tutorial. See you next time.